again, everybody. Today we're going to do another dishcloth tutorial. I did a dishcloth tutorial on this channel before with like a really basic dishcloth that was knit on the bias. And now this is just a different variation of a dishcloth. There's probably a million ways you can make a dishcloth, but this is just one of the others I use. So I have some samples here. You can see that it starts with a garter stitch border and then has a seed stitch center. And so the garter stitch border continues on the bottom and also on the sides, both sides, as well as the top. And then the middle is a nice seed stitch that gives it kind of a scrubby quality that we would want in a dishcloth. This is the same one. It's just a little bit bigger. I've knitted on slightly bigger needles. So we're going to learn to make this dishcloth here. I'm going to use the sugar and cream yarn which is just a basic cotton yarn that I like to knit with dishcloths. Um, it's this nice blue one. And we're also going to need a pair of knitting needles. And for that, I'm going to use these size 8 knitting needles. And Normally I actually knit dishcloths with size 7s, but I actually lost one of my size 7 knitting needles and I can't find it anywhere. So we will use these ones instead. You can see they're US size 8 5 millimeter needles. So for this we'll begin by making our slip knot. And then we're going to stick it right on our needle, like so. Oops. And now we're going to cast on 29 stitches. I'm opting to use the long tail cast on here, but you can use whatever cast on method you like. So we're casting on. This is the long tail cast on. I have a tutorial of several cast on methods on my channel, so I'm not going to really go into detail here, but we're casting on 29 stitches. Now you can cast on however many stitches you want for this dishcloth, it doesn't have to be an exact amount, but for this pattern I like to do an odd number of stitches, so 29 I think. The yellow sample I had was 31 stitches. I think the other sample I had was 35 stitches, but on smaller needles. So here we are almost done casting on our 29 stitches. And there you go. So we have 29 stitches on our needle. And now we're going to begin doing our garter stitch border. So for garter stitch border, we're just going to knit every row back and forth, knitting on every side. So we'll begin by knitting. Knit one, knit two, knit three, knit four, and just keep on going. This is the first row of our garter stitch border. And for this dishcloth, I'm going to knit five rows of garter stitch. And I'll show you how that looks at the end. It'll, it'll make it look even on both sides. You can actually knit as many or as few garter stitch rows as you like. 
I really apologize for my dog. If you can hear her nesting in the background. Oh my god. Um, so if you wanted a wider border, you could knit more garter stitch rows. So that was our first row. And now we're just going to turn around our work and begin knitting our second row and garter stitch again since we are knitting flat it's going to be knitting every row and so what this will do is you will end up with purl ridges on each side of the work which I will show you in a second we're coming to the end of our fifth garter stitch row or our fifth knit row we just have a few more stitches here. Okay. So now you can see my garter stitch border here. You can see on this side I have three purl ridges. One, two, three and then on the other side I also have three pearl ridges plus that like little cast on row so the cast on row kind of counted as our first row because I did the long tail cast on and so that's why we have our our six pearl ridges so you can see that here on this dishcloth I'm just showing you um, we're going to keep the border in garter stitch here on each side, but switch to seed stitch in the middle. So for that, we're going to pick up our work once again. And I'm going to knit three stitches, the three side stitches. One, two, three. I'm going to keep those in garter stitch so I'm going to knit them each time so we're going to knit three one two three and now we're going to begin the middle of our dishcloth which will be seed stitch now seed stitch is nothing but alternating purling and knitting and then just switching up the one that you knit we're going to keep the last three in the end for our garter stitch border as well. So we're going to begin by purling for our seed stitch. We're going to purl one and then we're going to knit one. Purl one, knit one. And we're going to do that, purl one knit one. We're going to purl one, knit one all down the row until we get to our last three stitches, which we will knit because we are keeping those in garter stitch for our border. So we're just alternating purl one, knit one, and this is seed stitch. Now I will show you once we turn the work um, how it's different from like a ribbing because obviously for a ribbing you would knit one purl one as well but with seed stitch it's going to be offset so that instead of lines it creates little bumps and you can see here this is why I cast on an odd number of stitches because I want to end the seed stitch with a purl stitch as well just like I started it and now we've come to our last three stitches so we're going to knit three to keep our border in garter stitch. So that was our first pattern row. And now we're going to turn our work around. Once again, we're going to keep our three border stitches in garter stitch. So we will knit three. And then we are going to begin our seed stitch again and you're going to begin with a purl but you can see 
you know, in case you forget what stitch you're supposed to be doing, you can tell and I'll show you how to tell. So you're going to basically purl into the knit stitches. So you see how this was a knit stitch and that has the little purl ridge. So you're going to knit into the purl stitches. So you're going to purl the knits and knit the purls, which means we're going to start with a purl again because we are working back and forth. And this will create the little bumps to make it like nice scrubby dishcloth quality. So we're just purling our knit stitches, knitting our purl stitches all the way down until we get to our last three stitches on the needle, which of course we will do in stockinette. So that was my final purl stitch, and now we're going to knit three. Excellent. So now you kind of get the gist of it. Here's what it looks like when it's, you know, just beginning. It doesn't look like much yet, but it will soon. So we're just going to continue this for several more rows and again this is a dishcloth so you don't really have to be exact about it i didn't count my rows i just kind of went until it looked like it was going to be a square and then i did my top border so you can see here I'll pull my yarn out a little bit. We're finishing up and we're about halfway through our dishcloth at this point. I just wanted to show you um, kind of how it's shaping up and what it's looking like. So you can see here, this is what the seam stitch looks like. You have the little pearl ridges that are alternating to create kind of like a seed effect, hence the name seed stitch. And we're just going to go up, knit about half more or, or twice as much as we've done. And once we get to a point where we're about five or six rows from how, where we want to end it, we will go back to the garter stitch border. So here, just knitting and purling, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, forever and ever and ever. So here, this is my final seed stitch row. And I'll show you in a second how long. You can see how long the dishcloth is. So. The seed stitches area is about a square, more or less. And so because of that, I think I'm ready to do my border. It's going to be the same as it was on the other side. So I'm just going to knit five rows. So five rows in garter stitch, which means knit every row. It's a little hard on this one to get into some of the stitches. You can see me struggling a little bit um, to get into the knit stitches that are before the purl stitches. So that's just kind of a quirky thing about knitting into like ribbing and seed stitch. But that's fine. So this is our first garter stitch row, our first knitted row. And then after that, we're going to turn our work. We're just going to knit four more until we have a border that is the same length as our bottom border. And of course, um, you can make this any length you want. If you wanted a rectangular dishcloth, you could absolutely do that as well. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure mine's not an exact square. I just tried my best. Nobody cares because you're washing dishes with it. 
So that was my final row of garter stitch. So you can see here I have my nice garter stitch border. Uh, you can see I have two purl rows on that side and three on the other side. And the reason I only have two on the one side is because the bind off is going to create that third purl ridge. So now we're just going to bind off. Again, you can use any bind off you like. I'm just going to use a standard bind off. You can see I'm keeping the stitches pretty loose here because I don't want the bind off to be super tight because that'll create um, like a tight border on one side, whereas like the other three sides have looser borders. So I, I want to keep them kind of the same. So you could do a stretchy bind off here or something if you like, but I find the, the standard bind off works well enough for a dishcloth. Again, um, if you need more detailed instructions on binding off, I have a tutorial on that on several bind off methods um, on my channel. So we're just going to knit one and pull the other loop over. Knit one, pull the loop over until we get to the end. We're almost there. Three more stitches to bind off. And then, oops, struggling here a little bit. I'm sorry for that. There's our final stitch. And now we have one stitch remaining on our needle, so I'm going to grab my scissors and we're going to cut our yarn. My scissors are not very good, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to loosen my loop a little bit so we can pull the end of the yarn through. And that is how you knit a dishcloth in, or, or this certain type of dishcloth. There's many ways to knit a dishcloth. So now, um, at this point, all I have left to do would be to weave in my ends. So I have this little end here, my bind off end, and I also have my cast on end. I'll just weave those in later. So you can see that this cloth is slightly bigger than this blue one, and maybe just a little bit smaller, like a couple stitches smaller than that yellow one. I knit those two on the same size needles. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that your dishes are going to be very clean because you have knit yourself so many dishcloths. I'll see you next time. Bye.